Do you guys think her neck is too short? <laughs> Hi guys, Amanda Brokor Studio here with another process video. So my last process video I had posted with a Spellbound's tail for some reason became completely corrupt. I have no idea why all the video disappeared. <sighs> Technology. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and that inspired me to start ripping apart a new model because I definitely don't have enough projects going on. Um, so we have here another Geronimo and uh, we are going to be putting a new tail skeleton on her today. So I will be showing you guys that process of how I make the bases for my tails. And this is going to be an angry swish tail because she will eventually be an angry mare. <laughs> and without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. All right, so we are going to make the skeleton to go. A little bit, there we go. <laughs> all right, I've got all my supplies here. So what you will need for making your tail armature is your armature wire. Um, I use 1 8 inch aluminum armature wire. I bought this giant roll that will probably last me the rest of my life. You can see that here. You'll need a 1 8 inch drill bit in your drill. Um, I also have some other various size wires. Uh, this is a 16 gauge steel wire. And then I have uh, basically like a jewelry wire. So this I, I use to connect some of the other wires together if I want some tendrils and stuff that need to be reinforced. And then I have my wire mesh that I use as the base. Of course, I will link where I get all these in the description. And this is what I use for the base that I put my epoxy over. So, and then of course you will need your baking soda and super glue to attach the tail. And then at the very end, we'll put a thin starter layer of epoxy over it. So whichever epoxy you use, my epoxy of choice is Magic Sculpt, <laughs> the label of God. Um, I just really like it. I think it works really nicely. It doesn't sag a lot and um, I find it's easier to sand. But whichever epoxy works best for you is what works best for you. So use whatever you want. Okay, so what I'm going to get started with is I am going to drill the hole where I would like the tailbone to come out or where the tail wire is going to come out. Um, I always make sure, I usually put like an X or a small dot um, where I want to drill it just so that I don't accidentally drill too low or too high. Of course, depending on what breed of horse you're doing, um, it's a good idea to look up, you know, how high or low their tail is set because it's actually quite, uh, it's pretty cool to see how much of a difference some horses can um, have when it comes to their tail set. So, I'm gonna go ahead, I've got that marked. Make sure you have a firm grip on the horse, but try and have it away from the drill in case it slips. And I'm going to put the drill in at a little bit of an angle. And do that. And there is that. This part here you're going to want to cover with epoxy before you start detailing the mane and tail. I just have to drill the hole first, so I'm going to patch this up real quick. And then I will come back and add the wire in. Okay, so I'm back. I have my epoxy mixed up. I was going to patch this and then I realized that's a little backwards. So we are going to go ahead and glue the wire in first and then I'll add this around there and then we'll start with the actual skeleton. So I have my hole drilled, got my epoxy pre-mixed, just set off to the side. So her tail is going to be kind of swished off to the left, off this way. I'll try and include a picture of the reference photo that is one of my main references for this. So what I'm gonna do first is start by cutting off a length of wire. I usually try and cut it um, a little bit longer than what I need. Um, and then what we'll do is I will put a little super glue on this oh and I will super glue on this. Twirl that around. Oop, there it goes. And then we're going to shove that into the body itself. 
Um, and I try, I try and have it so that there's going to be about two inches of excess going into the model itself. I feel like that helps stabilize the tail a little bit. Gotta clean up the excess. Just wipe up the excess glue drips that come down just so that it's not just absolutely everywhere. And then use our little and just put the baking soda just around the tail base. And I'm going to do about two or three layers of this around the base of the tail. And that is just to help strengthen it. So I'm going to start with two. Now I'm going to bend this tail into shape because this is probably going to crack. And then I will go ahead and refill that back in so that it's just where we're going to have it. So this tail is kind of close to the body. It goes down a little bit off to the right. And then the main part of the tail comes out and at the very end it swishes back. Actually drop it just a little bit lower and have it come a little closer to the body so she's really sassy this is where you can kind of have fun um, deciding exactly how you want your tail to look and you can just rebend it around until it looks about right And then I'm gonna actually trim off the excess because that's a little, we don't need that much tail. And this looks pretty basic right now, but this is basically where the main structure of the tail is. So this is where all the bulk of the epoxy is gonna go. So this is gonna be the strongest part here. And now from there, because this tail has got a couple tendrils, I'm gonna use this wire as well. which is, this is a steel wire, so uh, it's a little bit harder than this stuff, so it's going to have a little more strength for these tendrils. And it looks like there's maybe like one, maybe like two areas that are going to need heavy support. I'm just going to need this tail. So the first one is going to be underneath here. There's a little tendril that kind of comes off to the, this side a little bit. This is very similar to how I did uh, Cassini's tail, the Emerson Custom that has the breezy blowing tail. And then we'll also use this stuff. Okay, so I'll just cut off a large length of this. This stuff is super soft and pliable. You can't bend it too much or it will break. But it's okay because that doesn't that just basically helps hold this in place while I put the glue on. So the first one kind of branches off back here. So I'm gonna try. What I will do is kind of loop it up and around and then <laughs> twist it. It's always a challenge getting this started. Basically. Move that and then wrap it around. And this is how I do a lot of the more dynamic tails. They look completely insane at first, but it winds up being stronger, which is good because I don't want to have to, you know, worry about these breaking under just normal, you know, handling. So the other one kind of comes down like this and it ends like right around here. It's a little bit of a shorter thing, actual tail. So that's where we're at so far. 
Now we'll do the upper part, which comes up. So, oh, that one came off. You know what? I got this. Let's pull that off right now. At least this stuff comes off easy. Zip! All right. Well, I think I'm going to adjust that above the top here. So, we're just going to leave it like this for right now. So now I will glue it in place. <clears throat> Is there a cat in the bathroom? We'll try and And now I'm going to glue all in here to secure this bond here. Basically, weld it together with the soda glue. And that will just help keep it strengthened. I forgot that one kind of went down. Okay. So that's where, we're, where we are right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the epoxy on underneath here just so that that's out of the way. Even though I'm probably going to mess it up a couple times before it's done. All right. took me entirely too long to sculpt this but here we have the new epoxy booty and so now I can go ahead and move on and I'm gonna start putting the mesh and attaching the mesh to here I will probably mess this up 500 times before I'm done and I will have to re-smooth it but I'm too impatient to wait for that to cure so we have our wire mesh if you haven't used this stuff before uh, it's really cool it's very flexible it will break easily so you can't bend it too much but um, it is also very sharp so I would definitely recommend uh, wearing some type of glove otherwise you will probably you know pick yourself like a thousand times with this um, like I'm about to so do as I say not as I do <laughs> my gloves got covered with resin so I had to throw them out so I need to go buy new ones and gloves are almost impossible to find right now um, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start just cutting some basic shapes here. Um, just probably a big square out at first and then we'll go from there. So. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at my reference to see where I need to place some of these um, sheets. So this tail uh, kind of fans out at the base. So there's going to be some bulk up here that I'm going to have to add and then some uh, of the fanning area down here. So what I will generally do is I'll kind of hold it where I want it. I'm going to cut like I want it maybe this big by like this big for this first part. So what I'm going to do, cut that, place that. I'm going to put it down a little low. And then what I'm going to do is cut just a few little tabbies in this. 
and that will basically just make it easier for me to wrap this up and around. So that's what I'm doing right now, sorry my tail's in the seat. There I go, picking myself out. Who would guess it? That's so sharp. Okay, so it's holding on right now, but it's not really holding on by much. So what we will do is I will go ahead and put a little bit of super glue along the areas whoop, and all over my counter. And then I will kind of press that in and you're going to want to do a good one to two layers of this too, just to really get it to adhere properly. So I'll do one more layer here, one more down here. I try and hold the baking soda <laughs> over itself so that it doesn't create a huge mess, but it doesn't always work out. And I'll just put that in there like that. It's important to know uh, if you haven't used the baking soda super, super glue method, um, this chemical reaction causes it to basically instantly cure. It also gets extremely hot, so you don't want to accidentally touch the stuff <laughs> because it will burn. See, I've already, you know, just whatever. Okay. Pat out any excess. I'm going to wipe up this so I don't glue myself to the counter. Okay. All right. So now we've got this weird thing here. So we'll just leave that like that for now. And now I'm going to add on the rest of this now I'm trying to see what would be the best way to do this I think hmm. it's kind of all in between here see I've already started getting glue all over myself I haven't even started yet I got all the glue covered in there. Ah, uh, it was on the mesh. That's what I missed. Okay. What a mess. Okay, so. Back, I want it to kind of fan out. I'm going to put this. Let's see which way it would work best. Hmm. What I'm gonna do is cut these off in some little strippies. And then I can apply them on in smaller pieces. I think that'll work better. And then you can overlap this stuff, it's really thin, so um, I'm gonna do this part up here. Once again I'm gonna cut some little tabs in it so that I can wrap this around. Pinch that really tightly. So we've got that on there. So now we're going to go ahead and super glue that bit too. sound effects. Okay, let's do this. Get that in here. And let's do another layer. This doesn't, you don't want it to be super messy, but it also, you don't have to be like incredibly neat about this because this is just the base for the tail. It's all going to be covered, so I wouldn't make it too bulky. If you know you're doing a thinner tail, you might have to be a little more careful with how you apply this, but this is going to be a pretty thick and squishy tail. Um, and then we're going to do the other half kind of like, I'm going to wedge it out. Let's see here. So, 
think I'm gonna put this on the outside. And this is where this stuff comes in handy. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now, just to hold this in place, is I will thread this on either side. I wanna try and go as low and close to the other wire as possible. And then we will attach that and I'm gonna twist it just slightly and this will just hold it in place while I glue it. See, that kind of frees up at least part of my hands so that I can wrap this around and figure out how I'm going to secure this. So, ow, there we go again. Catching myself on these small things. And then I will once again glue this here. Now, I have no... <laughs> I mean, I use the same method every time I make a tail. You know, this is the same basic thing, but, it, you know, it changes every single time. I learn, I adapt, um, and I will change certain things or certain ways I do things to make things stronger for the future one or, you know, adapt it to fit whatever flow I'm trying to get here. So that's why this is more of a process video than a tutorial because it really varies depending on the custom as to how you're going to go about making the tail. If you're making a tail that's hanging down and, you know, doesn't have much going on with it, it won't really need this much support. This is for the more dynamic manes and tails that really have a lot going on and you want to try and make the base as secure as possible so you're hopefully not having to repair it ever but if you do hopefully it's stable enough that it, it'll make for an easier repair. Now some of the skinnier tendrils I find that sometimes it's just easier to just repair the whole thing but anyway I digress. So. We have this one on there now. And now I can kind of bend this to where I want it and I'll probably tack it down in a few other places but first I want to finish getting the rest of this mesh on so oh, we can That's right. It's okay if this gets bent and it breaks a few times before you put the epoxy on. I usually wind up redoing it multiple times um, just because I wind up moving the whole tail. Like this, you know, this whole process is just figuring out what is going to work. So I'm going to trim that little bit of excess off. There's some glue exposed there, so fill that. All right, now we're going to do something down here. I, I really like about this wire mesh is that um, it cuts really easily with scissors like any kind of scissors these are you know nice fiskers but any type of scissors will cut this pretty easily it's magical stuff despite it being a little bit of a pain in the butt to work with <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do one more thing I'm gonna tie a little area off up here See, I tighten this down 
right here with another little bread so that holds that in place. And now I'm just going to add some glue here because we don't have enough glue. So yes, the, the skeletons tend to look really crazy until you first start putting that on. And it really doesn't really matter how crazy it looks because that's what makes it strong. So attach these. Put a little bit more glue down here. Tap this in. Make sure I have all the glue covered and tap that excess off. All right, well now I have this. So now what? <laughs> because this clearly is a little bit too boxy. So what I'm gonna go in with now are my snips. Once again, I really like these because you can use just the very, very tip of this and it cuts really well. Um, and we are going to kind of shape out some of the tendrils here. What's good about this stuff is that it's also very soft. So you could always um, put the base on now, put epoxy over this and then dremel it into shape. And cause the, this stuff dremels really easily, but I find it, you know, less waste if we just go ahead and trim this up a little bit now. So, um, if you know what you're going to do, you can just start cutting. Um, I like to sometimes doodle a little bit what I'm doing here. It's not usually, it's probably not going to show up on camera very well. And you can see that this is all, i going to smooth that back out. Um, probably not going to show up on camera very well, but you know, it is. Uh, See what I'm doing here? This part is going to go up. Cut out here. And the trick is also this wire can make this one area oops, look really bulky. So the trick is to also kind of disguise it in the tail itself. Um, so we're going to have one little bit that kind of comes off and goes around here. There's actually going to be a buildup of epoxy over this. And because it's such a short area, it, it won't really need that support. You could probably put a little support in it, but it's going to be thick enough that I don't think it should be an issue. So I'm going to kind of doodle these out real quick. Um, see these up here, they kind of, oop, I got to attach that a little bit better. They kind of go up. And that just kind of gets, the, I don't know if you guys can see that or not in there, but I'm just kind of getting the idea of the flow here. So I'm going to start trimming out this top part here. And once again, this doesn't have to be perfect because I will normally cut this down, put the epoxy over. And then from there, I will wind up um, dremeling down the shape to refine it a little bit more anyways. So, but this just gets our basic flow in there so we have an idea. Because, you know, when you're looking at the thing before you cut it, it just looks completely insane. Like, how this is going to turn into, like, a flowy tail? It just looks like a hot mess. So, we're starting to get the shape here. Now, I'm going to put a small window here. That I'm going to dremel out after I put the epoxy over it. That way I can see exactly where I want to put the window at. Um, so this one, I'm going to have a little... Carefully don't cut yourself. Please be careful. And once again, these little bits when you're cutting are sharp, so try not to handle them too much. Uh, I'm going to glue this part down real quick, right here, along this thing. So try not to glue myself. Just a little dot right there. 
Okay, but we'll look at this. And then we'll... Oop, that didn't stick. Sometimes it takes one or two layers on this. Do one more layer. Zoop. You might have to put some away though. Okay, a little bit more on here. Okay. So, we're getting there. Let's see here. shop for all that. Oh, you said you need a pilot torch, right? Here. And then kind of lightly bend these into whatever shape I'm going for. I think it's going to actually flip out more like that. Kind of You definitely want to look, you know, if you have a particular reference in mind, look at that and then also look, you know, at some other ones and then factor in like, is, are you trying to portray wind? Are you trying to portray a certain type of swish? You know, where in the movement, um, the tail is so that you try and have it flow as evenly as possible. Because sometimes, you know, tails can be all over the place, too. So it's just a good idea to have in mind exactly the flow you're trying to get so that it is easier to get that into your sculpture. So this one has this, like, one random tendril that's, like, going in a different direction, which kind of, like, <laughs> is messing with my head a little bit in the picture. Um, so I don't know 100% if I'm going to keep that or not, because I just don't, aesthetically, I don't know that it's as pleasing to the eye mm -hmm. as doing it slightly differently, so. So... see here the direction I'm heading in now I think that's pretty cool. with the Try mine that way. flow <laughs> what's this one one don't lay out here and this is the part where I don't want to you don't want to bend this too harshly I'll show you here soft bends are fine but if you like crease it or if you start bending it too sharply like Like if you were to crease this and you're like, oh no, I want it somewhere else. And, oh no, I want it somewhere else. It will weaken this greatly and actually it breaks pretty easily. Of course, I can't get it to do it now when I'm trying to do it, but any other time it will break very easily. So it's just, don't bend it too much. Hopefully I'm not mumbling and you guys can hear me. So now what I will do is I'm just going to kind of look at this again and see
where I want the flow to go. I think that's about, hmm. Oh, I kind of like that more. Okay. We're getting a sass here. Okay. I'm kind of digging this flow. You can kind of see here where we're at. We're getting the flow down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth out this part again because I've dented it all up and gotten baking soda on it. So the just use a little bit of alcohol and wipe that over there. And that will smooth it back out for the most part. And now what I will do is, ow, is we will mix up a fresh batch of epoxy and we're going to put the thin initial layer over this. And then we will be done. So I'm going to mix up that epoxy and then I will be right back. Okay, so I have my epoxy mixed up. So now we're just going to start putting a thin layer over all the wire and getting this little armature ready to roll.
I think I am done putting on this layer so you can see I just did a really thin layer over the whole thing you don't have to do the underside if you don't want to you can I find it's just easier just to do one side and then let it cure and then once it's firm I can start doing the detail layer over that and I'll usually just start from the underside and you can just sculpt the detail layer directly over this once you pile on the epoxy yes Paul no oh, hush <laughs> so you can see here it looks a lot more tail like just from that thin layer of epoxy and of course there's a few areas that probably look a little weird a little thin um, and they will get that bulk up you know they'll get the the bulk up in here and throughout there and then of course we'll carve the detail layer over this so this will kind of help with the flow you can also kind of mark like I'm gonna put a window right around here it'll kind of come down and go out like that so this will all be cut out in here and you can just mark that in there if you want to um, you can also kind of loosely mark the direction of the hair too that might help just getting that on there so you know where the detail layer is you know, where the flow is going to be too and that kind of helps when you're laying out your epoxy can i help you excuse me i'm doing something here Anyway, so as you can see here, this is where I'm at. I will just use a little bit of alcohol to smooth this out, and then I will let this cure, and then we will move on to the next step. Paul, for the love of God. Okay. And there you go. I hope that this was informative for you guys. If you had any questions, feel free to message me. Otherwise, there we go. And this is another Patreon exclusive tutorial. So once again, I want to thank all of you um, for being a patron. It really helps out. And I get to show you cool things like this. So there you have it. And Paul's here. <laughs> all right. Bye.